The god of the symbiotes is here to destroy the Marvel Universe. This is King in Black. Welcome to the comic story and channel where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be giving you what we are dubbing King in Black Core, the full story. King in Black has a ton of tie-ins, which make the core storyline kind of confusing if you watch them all back to back. And while that video will be coming, today we're going to be telling you the story of Venom in King in Black. Basically, it does an issue of Venom, an issue of King in Black, an issue of Venom, an issue of King in Black. To tell you the core King in Black storyline to allow you to understand what exactly happened and how Venom ultimately wins. So let's get into the King in Black core full story. Eddie Brock stands on a New York rooftop looking over his city. He is here. He can feel it. Cap, it's me, it's time. He radios the Avengers leaping off of the building, catching himself on a web line as Venom wraps around him. Across the city, the rest of the Avengers are getting the alert. It has begun. Venom crosses the city, slipping through a window into a darkened room. Eddie morphs back, staring down at a sleeping son, waking the boy up with a word drawing him back to the waking world. Dylan rubs sleep from his eyes as Eddie tries to explain, but the boy interrupts him. I know it. I can feel it too. Null is here, isn't he? Sadness fills Eddie's eyes as he nods, telling his son that they need to move. Over at Avengers Mountain, Captain America has taken charge. Move! Come on, people! It's time to go! Ground teams, evacuation ships are mobilizing to drop sites as we speak. We are the first on deck. Let's get mean, shall we? Cap says over the radio. Steve Rogers turns to Tony, asking where they're at, but Tony shakes his head, unable to track Null and his horde since they don't have heat signatures. But they'll trip over our landmines either way. Tony tells him as he motions to the screens that show that all of the old Kree and Skrull ships have been turned into floating bombs. You just like turning things into bombs. Cap notes with a smile, and Captain Marvel subtly shouts at them, pointing at the horde that has arrived. The stars in the sky have almost blacked out due to the large number of creatures. We're gonna need a bigger bomb, she tells them in awe. The symbiote dragons reach the field of destroyed ships, cutting their way through them quickly. Fire! Tony shouts, detonating the debris field and destroying the dragons. Meanwhile, in New York, Eddie almost collapses as he feels the symbiote creatures dying, but he knows that it didn't work. It barely slowed them down. Tony's cheers stop as he looks back at the screams, but Cap isn't waiting. He runs out of the room. All teams move, move! This is not a drill, people, this is it! He shouts over the comms. In the skies over the world, it darkens as the symbiote dragons descend, and below in the city, Dylan tries to argue as Eddie opens up the safe room. He tries to explain that he can help, but finally Eddie snaps at him. That's enough! I made you a promise! I told you that I'd protect you no matter what! He yells at him, and Eddie explains that this is his fight, his mistakes. You don't deserve the things that I've passed on to you, he tells his son sadly. He tells Dylan that he's going to end it, and he pushes him into the safe room, but before he can close the door, Dylan looks at his father one last time. Dad, please come back. I love you, son. Eddie tells the boy, closing the door, and as Eddie stands there, his calm sounds, and Cap tells him, We're going to plan B! Across the city, the dragons have descended, covering the buildings in a symbiotic ooze. Cap leads the ground team, heroes with lightning-based powers to combat the threat. As Cap fights to protect a young boy, he asks Tony if they've got any word from Thor. It's, it's not looking good down here, friend. Nothing yet, but our big gun just entered orbit now. Shouldn't be long, Tony responds. We need backup now, Tony! Cap yells when suddenly there's a voice in their minds apologizing for the intrusion. This is Charles Xavier. If you require backup, please stand by. My X-Men have arrived. Charles tells them as the mutants flood out of the Krakoan gates, joining the battle against the symbiotic dragons. Xavier smiles, telling them that he knows not having a God of Thunder is an issue. But I might suggest a goddess, he says, with lightning crackling, a storm arrives, lashing out of the dragons all around her. Beneath the city, Venom swings through the sewer systems, heading for the carnage spire that was left beneath the city. Eddie hopes to use it to control the horde of dragons if the others can sever their connection to Null. Eddie sits, allowing the spire to connect with his mind and connect him to the hive. Let's go! He growls, and up above, the Horde is winning. Doctor Strange's magic can only hold them back for so long, and Storm is being overwhelmed. But Eddie connects, hoping to help the others. Fear suddenly fills his eyes, though, as he sees the truth, screaming over the radio for the others to fall back. It's not just dragons! 
It's not just Null! This is how it started, before the symbiotes, before the dragons. Null's first enemies were the Celestials, and it looks like he settled the score with them. Eddie yells. Out in the city, the heroes look up to see the colossal cosmic beings descending through the cloud of creatures, their bodies now covered in null symbiotic beings. The Celestials land, destroying parts of the city with their massive bodies, and one of them opens, revealing the dark god within him. I see that my reputation precedes me, so I won't waste your time. I'm going to kill your world. Null simply says as he steps out. The symbiotes create stairs for him to walk down and he tells them to bring him Brock and he will make the world's destruction quick and painless. Cap orders for everyone to fall back as Null leaps into the air on his wings. Flying down, he floats over the heroes of Earth. And who are you supposed to be? Null asks with a twisted smile. The heroes look up at the dark god as Tony tells Cap that the big gun is incoming in 10 seconds. Cap stands tall. Normally, we're the last thing guys like you see, but today, we're just here to watch. Cap tells Null, He's here and awaiting your orders, Cap. Permission to engage? Tony asks. Cap's lips pull up into a smile. Permission granted. Go introduce yourself, Sentry. It would be my pleasure. Sentry tells him from orbit, and there's a crack as the sound barrier breaks as Sentry descends from space! He explodes through one of the Celestials, bringing out and grabbing a screaming Null, pulling him up into the air. Hi, my name's Bob, but you can call me the Sentry. This'll all be over in a... He begins to greet him, but fear fills his eyes as Null reaches out, grabbing him. The Horde remembers Sentry. It remembers what it did to Carnage. Now let me introduce myself! Null grins, and with a heave of strength, he rips Century apart, continuing to fly as he absorbs the void from within the hero. I am Null, Lord of the Abyss, God of the Symbiotes, the darkness aside of you. That darkness bows to me, and now I am the Void. The heroes are shocked at what they see as Tony gets on the comms and sounds a full retreat, but Cap shakes his head ordering the heroes to evacuate as many people from the city as possible. We'll hold the line. Avengers, assemble! He shouts as they're interrupted with Null descending again. What was that? Your defiant last stand? I must say, I'm not terribly impressed. I had hoped the mighty Earth would have proven more worthy of a battle. Alas, you will fall like all the others. I've met your armies, little ones. Now meet mine. Null raises his hand, and the symbiote oozes that are covering the ground begin to react. They reach up, wrapping up our heroes, trapping them, pulling them under the darkness. Null smiles, looking up into the sky, and the symbiotes begin to form a shell around the earth, covering it as well. No more sun. No more stars. No more light. Isn't this better? Null whispers. But Storm still flies, lightning crashing, killing more of the dragons as they swarm her. But Null turns and the symbiotes become huge, wrapping around the buildings, reaching out for Storm. And she's snatched out of the sky. In the command center, Tony yells for Eddie. We're gonna try something. We're gonna give him what he wants. Eddie tells Stark. Tony is shocked, telling Venom not to give in, but Eddie cuts him off, telling him, it might buy you guys some time. Eddie morphs fully into Venom, asking his other if he's ready. Though the symbiont is hesitant, it agrees. Let's go meet our maker! Venom growls, and above, Null turns with a smile. Hello, little one. I can hear you calling. The ceiling above Eddie explodes with a massive fist reaching down, plucking him out of the sewers. And as it reaches up, it flings him into the air, only to be caught by Null himself. Do you see how beautiful the dark is? Null asks. Please, just take me! It doesn't have to be like this! Venom gasps at the god. The mask pulls back, revealing Eddie's face, and Null looks at him and smiles. Oh, I'm sorry, there seems to be a bit of confusion here. My fault, really, I should have specified which Brock I was looking for. Null tells him. Fear fills Eddie as he begs the god to leave his son alone to take him instead, and Null reaches out, ripping Venom off of Eddie's body. No, I will take my child from you, and then I will take yours. He tells him with a vicious grin, and with that... He releases Eddie and sends him plummeting back down to the city below. A nearby helicopter watches as Eddie plummets from the Dark God. Venom struggles, begging his creator to let him go. Now, little one, don't fight this. You and I have met before. You can't fight me. Null tells the symbiote and Venom shifts. 
Don't take any from me! He needs me! It begs, but Null turns away as Venom is brought into him. Dragons fly in the distance as Eddie continues to fall. He's afraid. He doesn't want to die alone. Time seems to slow as he falls through the air and he clasps his hands, reaching out to a higher power. He prays. He knows that he hasn't spoken to God in a while, but he asks for one thing. Please, make sure my son is okay. He doesn't deserve to inherit my darkness. He whispers. Around the city, the people and the heroes continue to fight with the monsters. They are too many. They eat the city. Dylan gets on the radio. Iron Man here. What's going on? He, Tony responds. Dylan is shocked and asks if his father is okay. What? Who gave you this frequency? Tony demands. Dylan hesitates for a moment, and Tony sighs. I am going to kill Spider-Man, he whispers. He tells the boy to turn on the news and keep the line open for emergencies. Dylan throws the radio aside. Leaning back in his chair, he reaches out to his connection to the symbiotes, hoping to contact his father when suddenly a voice is screaming in his head. Dylan, no! Disconnect yourself from the hive! Null will find you! Venom yells to him. Dylan hits the ground as his connection to the hive is severed, sweat pouring down his face as he stares in shock. He looks up at the TV as the news choppers show Null holding his father over the city. He watched as Venom is ripped from Eddie and Eddie is thrown to the ground. Back with Eddie, he's falling. He sees the chopper getting attacked by the dragon who tears it to shreds, the explosion throwing him away and Eddie begins to tumble again. He smacks hard against a building, bouncing off, tumbling from wall to fire escape. His limbs twisted, his bones shatter with every contact. He continues to fall, and as the ground is about to reach out for his broken and mangled body, we are left on our cliffhanger. Across town, Eddie slams into the parked car after plummeting from the rooftops above. The metal crumbles, the glass shatters, and his broken body lays there. Eddie! Spider-Man yells as he swings over to help his friend, and Brock is unresponsive as Peter begins to yell for help, but the city is under attack. No one is responding. Pete! Eddie gasps. Dylan, promise me. He tries to state, and up on the rooftop, Null sighs. Oh, honestly, how hard is it to kill one man? He says, raising his arms. Eddie groans in pain as Peter begins to lift him up. I know it hurts, but we gotta get you help, Peter tells him. And suddenly his spider sense kicks in. Peter ducks fast as an energy beam shoots over his head. Oh God, he didn't kill them. He made them into his army. Spider-Man shouts as he looks over his shoulder to see Earth's fallen heroes, now overtaken by Null symbiotes. Spider-Man webs Brock and prepares to run, but suddenly a Null dragon overhead explodes in a ball of fire. Torch! Peter yells as Johnny Storm flies in. Hiya, Spidey! Get any help. Take him to the Fantastic Four lab. I got this. The Human Torch tells his friend. Pete tries to tell Johnny that the symbiotes aren't going to be hurt by fire. Good! Then my Nova Blast won't hurt the people trapped inside, but it'll give you enough time to get away. Johnny says with a grin. Pete tries to reason with his friend, knowing that he'll pass out after his Nova Bomb. And Johnny nods. Do me a favor. Tell everyone I said something cool and heroic before I left, yeah? I kind of have a reputation to maintain. He says, turning back to the symbionts. The city erupts into fire behind him. A Spider-Man quickly swings away. Eddie Brock in tow. And a short time later, Brock is strapped to a table in the Fantastic Four lab. Machinery continues to beep as they try to keep the man alive. Spidey stands nearby, asking Reed Richards how they're going to fix his friend. Jane Foster, the Valkyrie, also stands by. She turns to the wall crawler, explaining that she has the power to see how near death a person is. And she turns to see the massive skull of death glaring down at Eddie's body. I can't tell you how we're going to fix your friend, but I can tell you. We have to hurry. She tells Peter, and with these words, she turns to leave, explaining that she has a duty to shepherd the Century's soul to the other side. Spider-Man nods, telling her that he also has a job to do. So a short time later, at the door to Dylan's safe house, Spidey stands in it. And for a moment, he doesn't say anything, but Dylan lowers his eyes. Is my dad dead? He asks, and Peter looks away. Not, not when I left him, no. But I need you to come with me, buddy. They arrive back at the lab, and Dylan is shocked by the condition that his father is in. Reed stands nearby with Black Panther and Valkyrie as they go over their next move. Where the hell is Thor? T'Challa asks Valkyrie, but she hasn't heard anything yet. Blade stands nearby, arguing with the holograms of Professor X and Magneto, who refuse to sacrifice any more mutants in the battle against Null. 
There is no your people anymore, Magneto. This thing is coming for us all, the vampire hunter shouts. As Spider-Man walks into the room, he interrupts everyone's conversations to ask about Eddie, and Reed explains that there is no changes. T'Challa continues, though, asking about the use of the Infinity Stones, of the Cosmic Cube, or the ultimate nullifier in the fight against Null. Whoa, are we really discussing bringing that kind of firepower on board? I mean, he's just one guy. Blade notes, but Valkyrie looks at him, explaining that Null was the first being born in the Void. So yes, I think we should take the King of the Abyss seriously. King of the Abyss, huh? Adorable. Namor says as he steps through the door, Blade looking at the King of Atlantis. Who invited Namor? He sighs, and the king slams his trident to the floor with a boom, snapping at the heroes, explaining that his people had been fighting in the dark for millions of years. You all just started in your losing. I'm here, my people are here. We will fight. Now do any of the adults in the room actually have anything to offer in the way of a plan? I do. Tony speaks up from his place at the side of Brock's bed. You're gonna hate it, and I need a dragon. Tony tells him as he stands. He explains that they need Brock alive, and the only thing that can save him is a symbiote. Dylan nods, knowing that bonding his father to a dragon could save him. Tony nods and explains the rest of his plan. Namor will swim to the deep ocean to awaken the beings known as the Black Tide. He warns the heroes that putting them back to sleep will be no easy task. Blade will travel to the Ukraine, hoping to gain the vampires as their allies. And over in the bar with no name, the supervillains will discuss how the heroes fell so suddenly. So the doors open up and Wilson Fisk, mayor of New York, strolls in. Ladies and gentlemen, who wants to make some money? As the dragons fly over the city, Tony rockets through the crowd deep inside one's open mouth and he stays on the radio with Reed, telling him that when he gets inside, he's going to begin to break the monster's connection to the hive. He injects the monster with Extremis and it begins to bellow. He can feel its DNA rewriting and bonding with his own and he can hear its voice in his mind, but he begins to scream. Too much! Millions of voices in pain! He yells to Reed, and a short time later, Tony comes running back into the lab. He pushes past everyone as the symbiote pulses on his armor. I don't know how long it's going to take Null to overwhelm my reprogramming, but I got one. He tells them as they rush forward. He pulls out part of the symbiote that he captured and pours it onto Brock's unconscious body. No! Don't! Something's wrong! Dylan tries to warn him, and the symbiote slithers around Eddie, beginning to bond with him, but he suddenly screams, his eyes beginning to swirl, his vitals beginning to spike as Reed says that they need to get the symbiote away. No, that shouldn't be possible. I severed the connection. Null cannot be that powerful. Tony shouts, and Dylan steps in, trying to tell the others to move, but the adults don't listen as they scramble to help Eddie. I said move! Dylan bellows, lashing out with his power, disintegrating the symbiote that is trying to take over his father. Everyone stands in silence. Dylan, do you have powers? Tony asks. Reed becomes excited, explaining that Dylan is their secret weapon, the way that they can fight back. He's so excited that he doesn't notice the sound of Eddie flatlining until the others point it out to him. Tears fill Dylan's eyes as he stares at his father, dying on the table in front of him. Dad? He whispers to him. Eddie Brock slams into the car after Null threw him off the building, yet while his shattered body stopped on impact, his spirit continued onward into the realm of the Black Void. He was falling through blackness, a place that he had been before, and the tendril snaked out of that darkness, reaching for Brock's body. He could feel it, Null's influence taking over, his mind disappearing. Brock! A voice screams in his head and Eddie opens up his eyes. He could hear the voice, but he couldn't see it. Null's minions have you. Now, I can get you out, but it's gonna hurt like hell. The voice warns, the tendrils explode and Brock is falling again. The voice tells him he has to concentrate. What, what do I do? Brock questions, stop falling. The voice tells him that he is in the hive, that he has to stop falling the same way everyone else does. Brace for impact. Eddie can see the street coming towards him, the city below. He closes his eyes and he braces for that pain. But when he opens them again, he is crouched in the street in a perfect superhero landing. I'd love to tell you the worst part is over, but the next part is the hardest, the voice tells him. Eddie looks up to see Rex Strickland standing in front of him. Now stand the hell up, soldier! We got work to do. 
Rex orders him as he shoulders a shotgun. The symbiote pulls away from Rex's face as he leads Eddie through the hive-like hell that New York has become. Dragons roar in the distance. The symbiote goo pulses everywhere. Eddie looks up to see a group of people running through the streets and he tries to rush forward. He tries to help them, but he passes right through them like they're not even there. What's going on? Eddie gasps, and he looks up to see one of the symbiote dragons bearing down on him. Eddie, no! Get the hell away from that thing! Rex shouts as Eddie braces himself for impact, but Eddie wants to protect the family running. He rushes at the creature, but it passes right through him, sending screaming waves of pain coursing through his body. And when that pain passes, he opens his eyes in disbelief. My body feels like it was ripped in half. Dragon went right through me. Suddenly the world shifts and Eddie is standing in a dark room with Rex, people hanging suspended all around them. That was a warning! Rex tells him and they begin to walk through the vast chamber with Rex explaining that they are in the hive. All these people, Null took them. Eddie gasps and Rex nods, motioning to the group of heroes that are suspended as well. Sorry to say, it wasn't just civilians. Eddie begins to feel sorry for himself, but Rex shakes his head, warning the man that there is nothing that he could have done. There is something that I could have done! I could have saved them! I have to get back to my son! Brock shouts out in anger. Sorry, but you're a codex now. A memory. The symbiotes, they keep pieces of all of the hosts that they've bonded with in the hive. And they aren't real. They're ghosts of who they formerly were. Rex tells him, putting a hand on the man's shoulder. He explains that the real world is gone to Eddie Brock, that his real body has died. The only reason that they're able to move in the hive is that they were bonded to the symbiotes longer than anyone else. Okay, so you just need to get me back to my body and I can. Eddie begins, but in a flash, they're standing in the room where Eddie's body lays dead on the table. There is no you. You died, Eddie. Rex explains, and Brock is shocked to see his own body as Dylan leans over his father crying. Eddie tries to reach out to him, but simply passes through, and Rex nods, putting his hand on Eddie's shoulder again, trying to pull the man away, explaining that there is nothing that he can do now. Don't touch me! Eddie snaps, anger filling his eyes, and as the scene shifts back to the hive, I will not accept this! I say when it's over! Eddie snaps and he leaps at Rex, pushing him back through the hive till they're both standing in the streets once more. They don't get to take my life from me! Not like this, Rex! He shouts. Rex is confused, asking what Eddie means. My death. I won't allow it. You said it yourself. You were able to control some of the symbiotes in here because you've been bonded longer than anyone else. Rex nods as he stands, reminding Eddie that it can't affect the physical world. I can. You think you have control here because you wore a symbiote for a couple of years? Well, I've worn one longer than any human being alive. If I could find my other in here, I promise you the two of us will burn this thing to the ground. Eddie tells him, determined it now. Rex smiles wickedly, nodding in his agreement. Only problem is, getting it freed is going to be a little bit of work. Rex tells him, pointing, and the scene shifts. They're both looking at Null sitting on the black throne, Venom twisting and slithering around his arm. Eddie gasps in shock, but Rex smiles, shaking his head. Not alone, kid. Like I told you, there's some symbiote friendlies in the hive. Some that have been here before Null arrived and don't exactly agree with his agenda. Tyrannosaurus Rex will have your back as long as we're standing, Rex tells him. They shift back to the suspended people, the shadow shifting as someone steps into the light. But most importantly, I'm happy to say, I found the venom that I was looking for in the first place. Flash Thompson steps out of the shadows, geared for war. Agent Flash Venom Thompson, reporting for duty, sir. Good to see you again, Brock, Flash says with a smile. Dylan leans over his father's dead body, a tear in his eyes. And outside, Sue Richards and Blade fight against the growing horde of symbiotic monsters. Aided by Blade's vampire army, Sue yells over the comms at her husband, telling him that he has to hurry. I can't keep the shield up forever, she shouts. Reed nods, turning back to the young Dylan, the boy who might be their only hope. But he's still distraught. Spider-Man leans over him, telling the young boy that he doesn't have to do this if he doesn't think he can. And Reed and Logan turn back to the monitors that show the remaining heroes. We all have our missions. Above all, protect Dylan. 
He's the key to freeing our allies and the world, he tells the beaver, turning back to Dylan with a sad look on his face. Everyone ready? He asks gently. Dylan nods, rubbing the tears out of his eyes. My dad died. I need to hurt something, he tells the group angrily, and in a matter of moments, the heroes are throwing themselves against the symbiote horde, trying to clear a path for Dylan. As the heroes fight, one of the symbiotes gets close to Dylan, but the boy waves his hands, using his strange powers to blast that symbiote off its host. Dylan suddenly turns, though, seeing the symbiotic Captain America. You think you can defeat me, boy? You are nothing compared to us! We will devour the planet! Cap snarls at him and he throws his mighty shield! But Dylan raises his hand and he blasts the symbiote goo off of him. Sorry, Cap. I'm gonna need to borrow this. Dylan tells the hero. Cap leaps over him and Dylan knows that Null is in the hero's mind. I hope you can feel this! Dylan snarls as he blasts the symbiote off of Cap. Above the city, Null screams in pain, looking down. I see you! Finally! There you are, child! He says with a smile. On the ground, Cap comes to as a massive symbiote fist comes crashing down on him and Dylan. I can't push him back. I'm sorry, Dylan whispers to Cap, and suddenly a bolt of lightning cracks out of the sky, tearing through the giant fist. No, that power, familiar, but how? Null snarls, and he looks up to see Thor floating above him. It's called lightning. You would do well to become accustomed to it, villain. The Thunder God states, and he lands next to Dylan, asking the boy how may he help. Just have my back. I could do this. A little thunder would help too, Dylan tells him as he attacks another symbiote. I, that, I can provide. Thor tells him with a smile as lightning crackles in his eyes. The battle is fierce, the thunder god covering Dylan as the boy pulls the symbiotes off of the hosts. Finally, Null is had enough, slamming into the street in front of the heroes. You! He bellows in anger and Thor steps in front of the boy. Dylan, behind me, he orders. You're the one that they call Null. Yes, I recall drunkenly killing one of your dragon pets once. Thor taunts the god. Null smiles, telling Thor that he is the god of darkness, the god of the abyss, and Thor tells him, quiet, interrupting him. I am the last person that you will impress with your pitiful titles. So you may as well stop now. So you're a god, a king, good for you. Thor tells Null as he launches himself at him. Now allow me to teach you what those words truly mean, Thor says as he swings his hammer. Null dodges, slashing the god across the chest, throwing him back to the earth. He grabs Thor, slamming his head against the ground, choking him. Dylan runs up to help, but Null swats him aside with a backhand. Dylan hits the ground and the black goo begins to grab at him, but he can't stop them. There are too many. Null is too strong. Get off! Thor shouts angrily as he kicks Null away. Don't you see? You can't stop me, the world is mine! Null grins as Dylan is now covered in symbiotes, but Thor floats in the air. Mjolnir begins to glow and crack with energy. Nay, Midgard is under my protection. I have killed hundreds like you. All of them claimed to be the one true death, the living void, the end, and to that I say, I am King Thor Odinson, god of thunder and lightning, and protector of every world within this realm. Thor bellows as he lifts his hammer, and when I say it ends, I have had enough. He cries out with anger. Mjolnir swings mightily, cracking Null across the jaw, with the sound of thunder rumbling in the skies. His jaw flies free of his body, landing nearby. Null hits the ground, his tongue swinging freely out of his mouth. You, the world will burn for that. Null hisses as the symbiote goo forms another jaw for him. He points up into the sky, and Thor turns, the celestial's eyes beginning to glow and they turn to look at the thunder god. Thor prepares to leap into the sky as they open fire on the city, but Null grabs him, stabbing him in the back with a symbiote blade. You know the pain of all black, don't you? Well, now you have the honor of being killed by its creator! Null snarls as Thor screams in pain. On the radio, Reed is yelling for anyone that can hear him, but it's Tony that breaks through, telling the other genius scientists to calm down. How do you expect to fight two Celestials, Tony? Reed asks, and Tony steers his symbiote dragon through the skies, explaining to Reed that since Dylan freed of Null's hive, they've been getting along, and they slam into the Celestial. 
How am I gonna beat a Celestial? I'm not. Tony tells Reed as he and the symbiote begin to take over the cosmic being. I'm gonna make it my new favorite armor. Tony says with a smile. The Celestial turns, slamming its fist into another Celestial. On the ground, Null looks at Dylan, who is now trapped in his symbiotes. I am the only family that you have now. Come with me. Let us talk, my son. Null tells the boy, and Dylan screams, and on the ground, Thor gasps in pain, the sword still sticking through him. He looks up at his two ravens. Hugin, Munin, swiftly, find him! He gasps to the magical birds, and they turn speeding through the air in a blur. And in moments, they've passed into the galaxy, looking for Null's opposite, streaking across the cosmos. The Silver Surfer is coming! With the heroes all trying to formulate a plan, Spider-Man pulls Dylan aside to tell him that they have to have a little talk. They may not know each other, but he made a promise to Eddie to keep him safe. But there's more to it than that. He, of all people, should know what it's like. He too has lost his parents. A lot of people, really. All people that he's loved. It seems like the world is crumbling away. Like the Earth shouldn't still be spinning. Now that they're gone. But then, it always does. It just keeps spinning. The world keeps going and it never stops asking for things from him. It never stops hitting. It never stops knocking you down. But people like them, they have the power to stop it. They can get back up. They can grab the world and slow it down. They can make sure that the things that happened never happened to anyone else. That is why he comes here with something that was never given to him. A choice. It's okay to not get back up right now. It's okay to not face what's ahead. Everyone may keep stating that he's the only one with the power to turn the tide. As heroes, they face the impossible each and every day, and they always make it out. And even if this seems impossible, they will find a way. But just know, he does not have to do this. Soon, Reed says that it's time, and Spider-Man looks at Dylan asking if he needs anything. Dylan grits his teeth, telling him that he needs to hurt something. Meanwhile, back in the hive mind, where Eddie Brock is located, he begins to scream in pain, and Rex asks him what is happening. Is he? Eddie says that he doesn't know, but something is wrong. How is Flash Thompson here? Didn't his codex? Flash asks, what, die after you wore it? Sorry, doesn't work like that, Eddie. Just because it was lost to you, doesn't mean that I was lost. We all end up back here in the hive. Eddie asks, well, if that's true, did you hear? And Flash asks, what? What you said in my grave? About me being the better Venom, a better man, and the greatest hero? I'm pretty sure I didn't say it exactly like. And Flash stops him. Nope, I was there. I heard every last word. But all kidding aside, it meant a lot, Eddie, to know that I wasn't forgotten, that I did some good. Thank you. Flash extends his hand, but as Eddie reaches for it, he screams in pain again. And Flash asks what's going on. Eddie says that it's null. Something is happening. It's like he's connected to him somehow. It feels like something is hurting null. And Rex asks what could possibly be hurting him like that, though. Eddie laughs. <laughs> it's my boy, Dylan. But while Dylan joins the heroes out on the battlefield, back in the hive mind, Flash points up asking, Uh, what's going on? Everyone looks up to see all of the people caught in Null's influence beginning to disappear. Eddie says that it's Dylan. He's freeing them! And just then a giant red tear opens up. Eddie says that it's him. It's the hive mind. But it's different. I can feel it. Dylan is fighting up there. He's with Thor and they're, they're winning. They're hurting Null. Null is losing control, and these red spots, these are bruises, wounds, where the walls are breaking down. We aren't in the hive at all. We're in symbiote purgatory, Flash asks. If we're in purgatory, then what's beyond the wall? And Eddie begins to walk through, telling him, It's exactly what we think. It's either heaven or hell. As everyone steps through, Rex looks around, asking what is this, and Eddie tells him that it's the center. The central nervous system that connects all of the symbiotes in the universe. The eye of the center of the storm, the god hive. Eddie points down at a group of separated symbiotes, stating that those ones in the cages, they've been cut off from the hive. There's a reason that Null is keeping them caged. They're free of his influence because of Dylan. If we could bond with them, the way that his symbiote is able to absorb Flash's codex, we can pilot those symbiotes out of here and get back to the fight. Flash asks if he's sure about this, and Eddie says, I'm not sure, but it's a feeling. This place is close to my other. It might be trying to reach out and help us. Rex says that they do know that this is a suicide mission, right? There's no way that Null's not going to notice. But as Eddie tries to come up with a plan, Flash tells them, I'll go. This is why Rex wanted me in the beginning, right? How this all started? 
Well, the wrong Venom stepped up, and now it's my turn to do the same. This is my mission. It always has been, so let me do it, Eddie. Eddie tells him that he deserves better than this, but Flash stops him. That's enough. You're always questioning yourself, always doubting if you're a good guy or a bad guy. You always think that you're not good enough to be a hero. Well, look around. Look at how far you've come. Faced the darkest evil in the galaxy and you've beaten it to hell back. You might not think that you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cap or Spider-Man, but you're storming the gates of hell to save the world and rescue your son. You are a hero, Eddie! Make no mistake, you're Venom! Now let me be a soldier. Eddie tries to think of something but laughs and tells him, Good luck, Flash. Flash slides down the hill, opening fire, telling him, Luck has nothing to do with it! Just watch! Once Flash reaches the bottom, he begins gunning down everything on his way towards the cage symbiotes, but one of the dragons swoops down, biting off one of his arms. He then bites the pin of a grenade, stating, This is it! The Hail Mary! The grenade goes off in the center of the separated symbiotes, and everyone can hear Null screaming, No! Flash falls back, laughing but the freed symbiotes all begin to surround him. Rex says that they're going to kill him, and Eddie says, no, just watch. The symbiotes bond with Flash, and he begins to laugh. Yeah, hell yeah, let's go! Bonding with the symbiotes, he bursts out in the form of one of Null's dragons, knocking everyone away. But this isn't a dragon that's gonna fight against them. This is one that's going to fight for them. This is the anti-venom dragon! Eddie yells out that he did it. Flash broke the symbiotes out. He downloaded his codex into one of them, and now he's up there fighting. This is their chance. But suddenly, Eddie feels something lunge and grab him by the neck, and he asks Rex what is going on. Null begins to laugh as he takes over Rex's symbiote, telling him, I'm afraid that Rex is gone, Eddie. As Null holds Eddie over the edge of the cliff, he asks, Why does this feel so familiar? Dylan looked around. The hive was all around him. Faces of the symbiotes sneering and snarling. And he hears Null's voice telling him not to be afraid. It is time. Null growls, appearing behind Dylan. He floats forward, telling Dylan not to be afraid, that he isn't going to hurt him. But Null isn't the only voice that Dylan hears. Dylan, remain calm. Listen to me. The voice tells him. Null holds out his hand. I will give you the darkness. Together, we can end this war. Join me or I will burn your world to the ground. He offers and Dylan reaches out, taking the god's hand. You killed my dad. He snarls as his power begins to burn through Null and the dark deity screams in pain. The voice telling Dylan to reach out through the hive mind to free the heroes that are trapped there. Free Cyclops, free Johnny Storm, free Sue Richards, free Thor, free Doctor Strange. All of them are freed within seconds. The voice begins to link the other heroes into her telepathic plan. I'm downloading the battle plan into your head. This might hurt, she warns Doctor Strange, and instantly he nods his head, motioning to Black Cat to give him his staff. There appears to be a rather intense plan forming, and I'm quite tired of sitting on the sidelines. He tells her, Strange slams his staff into the ground, transforming into the god of magic. Null believes himself to be a god. Well, two can play at that game. The voice links all the freed heroes together, coordinating their attacks. Cyclops lets loose with his optic blast. Sue launches an invisible blast at the gathered symbiotes. Strange lashes out with the magic, and the heroes begin to funnel all of the symbiotes into the center of the city. Namor, you're up. The voice orders, it's about time. The King of Atlantis growls, flanked by the other dark heroes of the depths. He slams his trident into the ground, creating a tidal wave. And off in the distance, Spider-Man looks at the combined attack. Uh, guys, did I miss a meeting or something? He asks, the voice now in his head, ordering him to get clear of the attack. Water washes over the city and Storm and Thor appear, lightning cracking from the sky, hitting the water and electrocuting all of the symbiotes trapped within. As Null falls in pain, the voice orders Dylan to leave, but the god lashes out quickly, grabbing the boy by the throat. No, you think you can beat me, child? Wound me through the hive. You think you've won, but you have not beaten me, boy. And you are alone. No one is coming! Null growls, but now the voice is in his head. Actually, that's where I come in, she says, and Null turns, demanding to know who has entered his mind. Oh, I don't believe we've been introduced. 
My name is Jean Grey. Now let's see what makes you bleed. Jean says as her psychic blasts rip apart the symbiotes around them. Noel bellows in pain as Jean probes his mind. She sees the beginning. She sees him bending the very darkness to his will, creating the first symbiote. But her eyes widen in shock as she sees that there is nothing that she can do. Nothing the heroes of Earth can do to stop Null. But she sees a hope. There is another, a reaction to Null's darkness. Null is the god of the abyss, but not the darkness itself. Just as Null used the darkness as a weapon, the light rose up to stop him. The light acted as its own symbiote, choosing warriors to face Null. But the light wasn't strong enough, so it created something new, something stronger, a god of light. Jean falls, weakened by her attack, Cyclops running over, cradling his wife. She points up, telling Scott that the God of Light is trying to get into Earth, but it can't get through Null's barrier. Around the planet, we see it. We see what has been going on in the cosmos. The God of Light is slamming once more into the symbiote shields, but to no avail. And then Jean hears another voice in her head. Jean, don't worry. I am here. The Silver Surfer tells her as he takes the light within himself, pushing through the symbiote orb that covers the Earth. Null bellows in anger as the Surfer surges through the symbiote dragon horde, cutting through to the very center of them. The Surfer then stops as he hears the voice of the god. Oh, I see. You are not here for me. Go. Find your warrior. He tells the God of Light. The God of Light surges forward and in his lab, Reed is studying the energy readings. He knows what this is. We've been calling it the wrong name. The Enigma Force solved, he gasps, and suddenly the energy hits the room behind him and Eddie Brock begins to float out of his bed as the power of light encircles him. Eddie's eyes open up wide, streaming energy forth out of his seemingly dead body. Eddie Brock, you have been chosen. The power's cosmic command. Flash Thompson was a bully. Then he was a soldier, then he was a superhero, and now, well, he's a dragon. But Eddie Brock, he's a ghost, trapped as a memory of who he once was inside of a symbiote hive mind covering the entire world. And even still inside of that hive mind, Null's influence is supreme. Try as he might, Eddie is unable to stop Null, because this version of Null is a part of him, not actually Null. So once again, that moment of being dropped off a ledge repeats again and again. It's a part of the cycle, ashes to ashes, dust to... Except this time, Venom finds Eddie. As Venom bonds with Eddie, Eddie laughs. You broke three! You found me! And Venom responds, Always! We're together again! We are Venom! And it is time for you to return to the real world, Eddie! Eddie asks him how. I thought I was just a memory. And Venom tells him, You're a codex, and together we can escape. We just have to choose a form. And as Eddie tells him that he has no idea that he may have stolen from another calling themselves Venom, a giant arm reaches out of the ground. Eddie grabs it, squishing a symbiote dragon, and Flash Thompson, as the symbiote dragon, flies overhead asking, Holy crap, is that you, Eddie? And Eddie tells him, It is us, yes! Flash tells him, Jeez, okay, point me where to go. And Eddie tells him, No, this is between me and Null. I have to save my son, Dylan. I need you on the ground, Flash. Flash asks him, How? My physical form is in a grave. I can't just... And Eddie tells him, Remember what happened to Cletus when he got a dragon symbiote? Oh, wait. You are to lie for that part. Just go to your grave. Trust me on that. As Flash leaves, Eddie begins to make his way towards Null. When Venom tells him to wait, a bright light begins to shine and Venom yells, This is it! The one that Wraith told us about! It's here! The God of Light is here, Eddie! At that moment, a beam of light shoots through Eddie and into Null as he awakens, reviving into the world of the living. Venom has felt them before, like their kind, but different. His light, approaching, blinding, screaming, roaring! As Eddie's body begins to fall out of the sky, he yells to Venom to wait. Don't leave me! And Venom tells him, It's okay. We must let go so that it may take you. We'll find you after. Always find you, Eddie. Once again, the light begins to shine and even the mere sight of it harms Null. But for Eddie, his physical form begins to awaken. It was at this time that Reed Richards started to channel the energy source. It behaves like a symbiote. It always has this godlight. 
He knows what it is. They all do. They've just been calling it the wrong name. Finally, the Enigma Force is solved. Its cosmic energies flow through Eddie Brock, bringing his body back to life from the brink of death. And all he needs to do is choose his form. But Eddie laughs as it asks him, because there's only one answer to that question. He will be Venom! Meanwhile, over in the Arlington National Cemetery, Flash flies over the gravestones, stating, All right, Brock, you better be right about this. Flash crashes into the ground, letting the dragon be absorbed into the hive. And a few moments later, a fully flesh and bone human hand reaches out of the grave, reviving Flash Thompson from the dead. As the world smolders around them, the Silver Surfer and Null face off with one another. But Null, he can sense that he has met the Surfer before. The Surfer tells him that they have indeed met, and even now, he remains unimpressed. For there is another now, the God of Light. As the Surfer creates a sword out of his board, Null rises, telling him, Yes, I have heard. But no matter how fast light travels, darkness is always there, waiting! In a way, I admire the little light. I remember them, and they will die a noble death, Surfer. The Silver Surfer turns to him, perhaps, but I will not face you alone. As Null looks over, he can see the rest of Earth's heroes running at him, with Captain America leading the charge, yelling, Avengers, assemble! But before they could engage, something separates the heroes from Null in the form of an explosion of light and a familiar voice telling them, I appreciate the assist, but Eddie Brock stands up and fuses the Enigma Force, telling them, I'll take it from here. Null begins to laugh. <laughs> what is this? The great god of light has chosen a host that I've already killed? How many times now? Is this supposed to scare me? You don't possibly think that you can! But Eddie holds up his hand, summoning not only Thor's hammer, but Silver Surfer's board, telling him, Yeah, I do think. He takes a hold of Mjolnir and the board, slamming them together with a thundering kachong, creating a weapon fitting of a venom, a giant battle axe. He leaps into the air, swinging the massive weapon, narrowly missing Null, forcing him to flee. But Eddie can feel it. Null is hiding, running, throwing everything he can in their way. First, the dragons attack him, and with one swing, his symbiote entrails are slung about as far as the axe can fling them. Eddie then yells to Null to stop hiding, and through the bloody mist, Null lunges in asking, You want your end? Then let the All Black be! But as Null brings his sword down, Eddie catches the blade, telling him, No! No more swords, no more dragons. Just you and me, Null. Eddie throws himself into Null as the two crash down into the ground below, and as Eddie lifts his axe, he asks, You wanted darkness! I hope you enjoy it. Null cackles, telling him, We are nothing but darkness! And then there's a rumble as the giant celestial arm bursts through reaching for Eddie. However, Eddie doesn't wait. He leaps up to the celestial's head, and with one fiery swing, he decapitates it. He turns back, flying down, picking up Null standing over a high ledge, and then he asks, Do you remember when you dragged me up from the sewers? All that pain, the fear, the agony as you ripped my other from me. Null begins to tell him, You can't! Then Eddie buries his axe into Null, telling him, I remember it. All of it! As Eddie pulls back, he tears off Null's symbiote, asking, And do you want to know what I remember the most? I remember feeling hopeless, helpless, and falling. Null's fragile body slams into the ground below as Eddie follows up, telling him, Get up! We're not done! Null sits up laughing through the blood that is pouring out of his mouth. You can't win! You may kill me, but the darkness, it will live on in your son! Eddie grabs Null, shooting off into the sky, asking, You wanna talk about my son? Let's go talk! He bursts through the symbiote dome into space, and Null tells him that the darkness has teeth, child. And Eddie asks, yeah? Well, so do I! He opens up his mouth, spewing cosmic energy down on Null's head, melting his mind as he screams in pain. They continue flying, and Eddie tells him, You might have been right. There will always be darkness. We may all be swallowed by it. We may all lose. We may all be consumed by the void, doomed to drown in your kingdom of black. But me, I don't care. This is for Dylan. 
and he holds out Nell's body, pushing it into the first layer of the sun, burning him away until there's nothing left. Then he hears a voice, the voice asking if he can feel it. He's done it, and the others are singing to him. Null is gone, his hive. They are free. Back on Earth, the vampires all cheer, stating that they did it, victory. Finally, their nation shall be recognized for the noble state it is, Hail Dracula, and Blade cuts his way through that pack, with the vampires managing to bring him down to the ground as he laughs. The vampires ask, what's so funny? Blade tells him that he just happens to know what time it is. Before they could even ask, the symbiote dome shatters, letting the sunlight in, destroying them all. Thor and the Silver Surfer look at the battle axe and both hold out their hands, calling their weapons back. The axe begins to shake as Mjolnir and the board split apart, and Thor says that it would appear the battle has been won. The Surfer says, indeed, the battle is done. However, he does not think that things will be the same. As Eddie returns to the Earth, the symbiotes begin to swirl around, and everyone cheers that he did it. But Eddie, he doesn't care. He has somebody else he needs to see. Dylan begins to struggle, but Eddie grabs him, telling him, Hey, hang on. Everything's going to be okay. Dylan tells him that the darkness is in him. It's, but Eddie tells him, I know, just listen, okay? I love you, and everything's going to be okay. Dylan asks, what about the piece of Null inside of him? He can feel them burning. Eddie holds up his hand, glowing with cosmic energy, and he says that he knows. Try to breathe. This is going to hurt. So Eddie then thrusts his arm into Dylan's chest, and as Dylan screams, he tells him it's okay. It's going to be okay. He knows that it hurts. As Eddie pulls back, he takes the piece of Null with him, telling him that he made him a promise, that his son will not inherit this darkness. Eddie crushes the wiggling strand of Null, and as he does, he can feel his suit pulling off. He asks what's happening, and the godly voice tells him that he has done well, but they must leave him. He does not need the light to protect him, not anymore. Eddie says that he doesn't understand how will he, but the voice tells him that he has a new role. He has to become something else, something new. Soon the symbiotes begin to crawl up and Venom shouts asking if they can hear him. Can he feel it? Can he feel what has happened? Eddie tells him he can. He can hear them all. And Dylan asks if he's okay and Eddie, bonded back with Venom, says, Yes, we're okay. Now stay here. I'll be right back. Eddie spreads his wings as he flies into the sky as all of the symbiotes follow. And Venom says that the others are speaking in their ancient tongue because he, he defeated the void. He freed their kind. He is the hive mind now. Eddie Brock is the god of the symbiote. Venom is the king in black. And there you have it, the full story. Now, for those who are wondering, a full story is a collection of videos that we made over the span of six months to a year. It's it's basically a lot of videos put together. And today's videos came out over the course of November 2020 all the way to March 2021. Now, you're probably wondering, Benny, what about all those King and Black tie-ins and stuff you did? Well, we're actually starting a new thing here at Comic Story, and because of the nature of Marvel and DC events, where they just have so many tie-ins, it gets confusing. We're going to bring you the core full stories telling you the exact plot you want to know. And then we're going to bring you what we're calling an omnibus full story, where we bring you every tie in, everything you needed to know if you want the full picture. Right now, I'm debating even putting Venom 1 through 30 on the omnibus edition of this because that is technically a part of the whole King in Black event. But let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. We did a vote over on our community page about it, which is why we decided to do this because I didn't know what you guys wanted me to do, if you wanted the two full stories or just the one. But there is a vote on our community page, and if you ever want to know, hey, how do you decide what's happening on the channel? Most of the time, it's Patreon or over there. But either way, guys, thank you for watching this core full story for King in Black. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please, if you watched the video to the ending, give us a smiley face down below. Just tell me if you liked it or hated it. Anything, any comment down below will be super helpful. But simply a smiley face if you enjoyed the video would be great. And on top of that, just thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time right here at the Comic Story Channel.